in the high desert in the great American Southwest. West. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM. John, welcome to the program. It's good to have you with us. You're with us. You're with us. You're with us. Welcome to Coast to Coast PM, the number one unofficial Coast to Coast AM podcast. This is a podcast where two brothers analyze the world's largest overnight paranormal radio show known as Coast to Coast AM. My name is Paul, and I am the guy that listens to this inexplicable radio show here with my brother. Hey, it's Chris. I'm the Helena Bonham Carter to your Johnny Depp, except with a whole lot less eyeshadow. I don't even know who that is. Is that the the woman that's always in the movies with them? Tim Burton know. movies. The Tim Burton yeah. movies? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, probably, you probably know her best from Fight Club. She was the weird chick that was obsessed with the Ed Norton, Brad Pitt character. Yes. 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 Love that movie. Love that yeah. movie. Uh, and the third graphic novel. Uh, is actually coming out about Fight Club, which is very exciting. If anybody wants to check that out. But Chris, we are not here today to talk about Fight Club. We are here today for our final episode of Spooktober. Spooky! So today we're going to be talking about a very specific haunted house. Ooh, haunted house, that was a good idea for a Spooktober episode. We haven't done a haunted house yet, and it felt like a, a great way to wrap things up. Real classic, yeah. you know? Yeah, classic. So, Today is going to be a George Knapp interview from October 17th, 2021 with a man named Daniel Klaus. So we've taken a little bit of a George Knapp break, but it's kind of it's good to get back to that. It is. You know, he's he's a weekend guest host. You know, he's he's not on too much, but honestly, his episodes are very good. He gets good yeah. guests. Yeah. You know, he's 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 great. He, he's top tier guest host on, on so Coast. that the the guest hosts are in charge of their own scheduling. You know, I don't know, but it feels like they are because okay. some of the guest hosts have terrible guests and uh, George Knapp as a weekend host always has great guests. So well, I, I he's feel got like the, he's got the history, right? I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of especially authors and stuff like that who have books coming out would prefer if they can't talk to George Nori. George Knapp, I imagine, is one of the better hosts to talk to. As. Yeah. At coast to coast, yeah. No one, I don't know if anyone really wants to talk to Connie Williams or Richard Surrett. Right. You know what I mean? It's like right. we haven't even done an episode. We should do an episode on them at some point, uh, yeah. but we we haven't even done one of their episodes yet because honestly, a lot of them just aren't very good. Like, right? Just, yeah, yeah. The it's, subreddit, it's, the subreddit hates on Connie a lot, dude. She, uh, I don't know. I try not to throw too much shade, but there's her guests are also bad. I think is the thing. That's right. the part that really frustrates me. Is that I don't Dude, like it her could, episodes. It could crush you. Yeah. It could absolutely crush you if you have bad guests. Yeah. But she has her own podcast that's uh, only for the well initiated. You know, it's no intro level paranormal. It's all real top tier paranormal, according to her. This is no 101, seen. baby. This is advanced degree stuff. I think that's what she says, actually, is that it's advanced and not 101. You could, right. you could be her promo, man. So, Chris, our buddy Daniel Klaus owns a uh a haunted house this is called the hinsdale house so daniel the hinsdale a, house yeah. i've never heard of it yeah so he's a paranormal researcher and he bought one of the most infamous haunted houses in the united states so the hinsdale house is located in western new york so yeah i would imagine western new york is pretty uh haunted it is so we'll be listening to his interview with george knapp but before we do that we got to go check in with tim Pinnell. tim time so Live from the Coast to Coast AM blog. And you gave me a real Tim Banal this time, so thank you. None of yes. that boo-boo. What what do we say? Uh, down Ryan, by the river. Ryan's van by the river. Was river was. Ryan's van by the river. We're, yes. not, we're not going back to that. We're going back to Tim time. We only do Tim moving forward unless there's something crazy that gets posted, but usually it's Tim who does that. It's got to be Tim. It's got to be Tim. So it's Tim. So today's article, Chris, sixth Nessie sighting of 2022 recorded. How have I not heard about the previous five? You haven't heard one through five? I haven't heard one through five. You got to check out the Coast to Coast AM blog more because they've made a post about every single one. Am, am I going to be lost? Uh, No. No, you'll be fine. Okay. 
we'll right. we'll be, we'll go back and read through them later off off here. So, reading from the Coast to Coast AM blog, a mother and daughter visiting Loch Ness spotted a strange anomaly out on the water that has been credited as this year's sixth official sighting of the site's legendary monster. The case reportedly occurred last Tuesday afternoon as the unnamed duo from the eastern part of Scotland were walking along the bank of the country's iconic site. Paul, can I make a a quick little... um, Interjection? Yeah, we'll go with interjection. I was about 22 years old before I found out that lock means lake in Scottish. I was today years old when I found that out. I did I did not know that. Maybe I did yes. that at some point, but I did not remember that. So you go to Scotland, it's all it's like Loch Ness, Loch Mississippi, Loch Tarragon. I don't know any other lock names. But that being said, that's the description. Yeah. Oh, that's it. So it's it's Lake Ness is basically what it it's is. It's Lake Ness. Yeah. Okay. So it's the Lake Ness monster. Interesting. The Ness, the Ness Lake. Hey, you know, this podcast is all about learning. So thank you for yeah. bringing that up. Great interjection. So back to Tim. Their trip turned truly unforgettable when the pair noticed a long break in the water, which was otherwise still and calm, approximately 600 feet from the shore. Puzzled by the curious disturbance, the pair were all the more mystified by a black lump that emerged from the spot out on the lock and then submerged after about 30 seconds. Interesting. Okay, keep going. The duo indicate that the peculiar aquatic anomaly subsequently reappeared a few seconds later before finally sinking into the water for good. What exactly the weird wonder might have been is uncertain, though. The witnesses observed that, quote, the lump appeared to be boxy in shape and about the size of a football. It did not appear to swim about Rather, it just bobbed up and down, then disappeared. Fortunately, they managed to snap a photo of the oddity and included it in a report to the official Loch Ness Monster Sightings Register, which is deemed the case worthy of a spot on this year's list of potential Nessie encounters. Dude, you gotta love the internet, man. Every every cryptid has its own website now where you can report sightings. This is incredible. We live in an incredible world. Can you imagine the 80s when the only place you had to go to was Coast to Coast AM? You had to call in. You had Coast to Coast AM, and we've heard Astrology Magazine. (laughs) So So far, before all this world, Astrology Magazine is all you had. I, I misspoke on that episode. I went back and listened. It was actually Astronomy Magazine. Which no, it is, wasn't. Yes, which is all That's the more even questionable. more wild. <laughs> yes. That's even more wild than it Astrology is. Magazine. Yes. That's, all right, it, Paul. It's much weirder. You just pulled up a website here, LochnessSightings.com. What are we looking at here? So total for this year, number six. Now you can go to LochnessSightings.com to see this picture for yourself. It is a relatively grainy photograph with a big red circle. This was clearly taken on an iPhone. Uh, And you can see a tiny, tiny little dot out on a very large lake. Inconclusive, Paul. That's all I got to say about this this picture. This isn't convincing you? This, that is... Not a very convincing Loch Ness monster. That could be the Loch Ness monster. It could also be a shadow. Uh, could also be literally anything else. Do they have turtles in Scotland? It could be the back of a turtle. I don't know. I, I want to see the other. Can we take a quick look at the other five, Paul? Yes. Not very convincing. Not very convincing. Oh, not so, very convincing. In terms of what else we're seeing here, it is mainly ripples in the water. And nothing else. Yeah. This, this is, is pretty much just some some water ripples. The old Loch Ness Monster ain't doing too good these days, Paul. Not getting up far enough for real sightings. I miss the old sightings, you know, the, the ones with the big neck. Yeah. Uh, although I think those were all debunked is the problem. <laughs> Poor Loch Ness Monster. It's sad. That was there. a good one, dude. That was like a childhood cryptid for me. You know, that's why I wanted to bring it up because I know that, uh, you know, we, we used to have that book with the big Loch Ness monster on the front of it with all the different cryptids and conspiracy theories and we were kids that that book is probably what did this it's it's, it's, that a book's mix, fault. it's a mix of a couple of those books there was also one that was like called strange phenomenon or something like that mm-hmm. that was also a picture book that had like a whole bunch of crazy disappearances it had stuff about voodoo it had stuff about uh spontaneous human combustion i remember that one and so a lot of weird stuff in that book. So I blame that one as well. 
whatever happened to spontaneous spontaneous human combustion i guess people stop smoking cigarettes (laughs) (laughs) right 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 yeah they stopped smoking cigarettes and then them like lighting themselves on fire over time yeah i would say that that correlates vapes don't burn you alive uh quite as often so some people's cell phones can and the tesla cars can also burn you alive paul yes and also 5g uh, I hear it can catch curtains on fire. So watch out. That's that. just killing our sperm, Paul. Oh, is that it? Is it just the sperm? Yes. Okay. Just the sperm. Sorry, I, I'm, I read something wrong. All right. So, Chris, to our haunted house with our buddy Daniel, the paranormal researcher. Let's go. So, how did Daniel first get into this? Well, Chris, he grew up in a haunted house. So, oh. he, this is in his blood. So, what he's going to yeah. be talking about here is not the Hinsdale house. This is the house that he grew up in, right? Okay. So he, he goes way back with these. Yeah, I mean, this, this place was, you know, freaked me out as a kid. Like, uh, we had creepy things happening in the house all throughout my life. Uh, it, nothing really malicious, just like it, like our, we would leave our house and we would come home. You, you know nobody had been in the house and there'd be like crayon drawings on the ceiling and there'd be crayons sitting in the middle of the floor. Um, poltergeist activity. I know it's poltergeist activity now, but... Things would be moving, like my sister's stuffed animals would be moved off of her bed, sitting on the middle of the floor, and I'd always get blamed for it. Um, so just creepy things like that uh, happening all throughout my life. And uh, my parents always kind of just tried to protect us from it, you know, uh, until later in life I actually purchased the house. It, like, all just hit me like a bat again when my son started telling me that he was seeing things. And I was like, oh, my God, what was I thinking? You know, like, now he's dealing with the same things that I did when I was a kid. I love the idea of creating a ghost for causing mischief as a child. Mom, dad, I don't I don't know what happened. It was a ghost. You mean blaming the ghost? Yeah. For for your shenanigans. <laughs> That's exactly right, Paul. You know what's even funnier than that is if there actually is a ghost and the kid keeps blaming the ghost when the ghost isn't doing anything bad. The ghost <laughs> isn't doing it. And the ghost is just trying to be like, it ain't me. Yeah, and the ghost is picking up behind a kid and, like, trying not to get, like, exercised out of the place. I'm just trying to live in this house. It's comfy. Grew up here. I like this house. I also love the idea that this guy grew up in a haunted house, knew it was haunted, and then when he talks about when his parents were retiring, he bought it off them, basically. And then his kid starts seeing ghosts. He's like, oh, this is terrible. It's like, yeah, you bought a haunted house. You bought... You went out of your way to buy a haunted house. You knew it was haunted, and you made the active decision to buy that house. Now my son see ghosts. You know what you could do? Have your parents sell it to someone who doesn't know it's haunted. Have them deal with it. Or let's get, you know, one of Father Malachi's buddies. Have him come exercise it. Have him exercise it. Now, what is the the moral obligation to let a buyer know that the house is haunted if you are selling That's a very good question. So I know a lot of states, if like a murder or some Mm -hmm. kind of crazy crime happens, you have to say it. But haunting is an interesting one. Should you disclose? Because, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, if if say it wasn't someone who died recently, but it was a demon because you were playing with a Ouija board, do you need to let people know? Like, hey, by the way, this is the basement. Uh, you know, the the air conditioner units, you know, this many years old. And then also, I played with a Ouija once, and I think a demon lives here. I opened up a portal to hell. No, so I, I don't think knock, it's still open, but we're gonna knock like five grand. It'll be fine. Asking price. So there you go. Well, he. When he was older, you know, he bought this house off his parents and he started doing his first paranormal research. uh, And he actually found the origins of this haunting, which was two little kids who died in the house. Oh, no way. Cool. Well, not cool, but interesting. (laughs) Uh, I was doing more research and ended up finding that these two children that lived in the house were actually two children that died of cystic fibrosis. And it was actually in the paper, which was which was kind of cool to be able to find that information. And then about a week after I found that information, um, I went into the attic. It was like one of those attics that are like in the ceiling with a little square. And uh, I had never been up there. And I put a flashlight around up there. And when I put the flashlight up in the corner, there were these boards. And I tiptoed over there, turned them around, and there were paintings of a little boy and a little girl playing with a dog. And I felt like it was like a lifelong like paranormal investigation for me, you know, because it started happening from when I was a kid. Until I was in my adult age, 
was able to kind of like figure it out, you know, like a like a lifelong paranormal investigation. And then from that point on, I, I just was my interest was peaked in the paranormal. Paul, are we going to find out more about what paranormal investigation actually entails? We can certainly do that. Uh, so we do a bit on this episode, but there are entire Coast to Coast episodes just about paranormal investigation instruments and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I want to yeah. know about the science of paranormal research. Science is a strong word, but we can certainly dive into the it. The hard some point. science of paranormal research. The Paul. super duper real science. Uh, and there's quite a bit of paranormal research that goes down at the Hinsdale house that we'll get to. Okay, um, cool. But, you know, Daniel grows up in this house, buys it, does his paranormal research and, and gets hooked, like he said. So, you know, naturally, he decides to go and buy a second haunted house because one wasn't doing it for him. Where is he getting all this money? I don't know, actually. He doesn't address that fact. Where is all this money coming from? He's just buying up houses. He's just buying up haunted houses and, like, being a full-time paranormal investigator. How is he paying for this? I think he does well as a paranormal investigator. He has shows. He has movies. Uh, okay. So he, he okay. does okay. All now, right. I always imagine that paranormal investigators don't get paid very much, but I, he makes enough to buy two houses. I guess. Yeah, but if you get like an A&E show or a uh, sci-fi show, you're probably doing all right. Dude, honestly, with how many people watch Travel Channel crap about the paranormal, you may actually be making more money than I think. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, you're probably doing okay. Now, that's not all paranormal investigators, but like the cream of the crop's doing pretty well. It's it's like influencers. The vast majority of them are broke, but, you know, there's a couple that are, are that are killing. loving life. Yeah, exactly. Right. So he goes out, got to buy a second haunted house. Let's do this. this uh, my, my personal family home was my first haunted house that I bought. Okay. Hinsdale is my, my second one. So the first house, you get hooked on the, the weird stuff and decide to go researching it. Then I'm just imagining the conversation you must have had with your wife. Honey, I'm going to buy this really old crummy house that's about to fall down. And by the way, it's haunted, right? Yeah, but I didn't <laughs> tell her I was going to do it. I asked her. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I didn't want to end up in the doghouse. I mean, it was, uh, it, it definitely, she, she was, she saw my vision for it. What's Smart this? man though, that he's like, oh, I didn't tell her. I asked her. I asked, <laughs> I asked, I said, honey, I asked. here's my idea. Mm. Do you think this is a good idea? So he, he went out because this is a, a pretty uh, famous haunted house in New York. Right. And it was going to be destroyed. So it was in disrepair. It hadn't been occupied. For decades, like literally decades, no one had lived there. Uh, and he went to the bank, and I guess he made, he struck some sort of deal where they allowed him to purchase it. Uh, and then he he had to basically put it up on struts uh, to keep it from falling down so that he could do paranormal research inside of it. Paul, it's actually creeping me out a little bit because literally last night, I had no idea what the topic was going to be. Last night, I finished reading H.P. Lovecraft's Sinister House, Oh, which is about a haunted house in an old New England town. Really? And it's about a guy and his uncle who go to investigate it. A little I bit of synchronicity I, here, Chris. It, it's creeping me out a little bit, dude. I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it. I'm worried we may have turned a key somewhere. We might have. We might we have, may have maybe. opened up one of these doors. I've been uh, screaming and yelling that I would never open. I would be so mad if you opened the door and I didn't, and I'm the one that, like, pokes at it. Yeah. Like, I'm the one that pulls out the Ouija board, and then you're the one that gets the demon in your house? That's not fair. Yeah. yeah. All right, Oops. so this this house, right? Really, really famous haunted house in New York. He buys it, you know, trying okay. to figure it out. So he starts doing his paranormal research. So he's going to start off here, like, what's the history of this house? Like, why is it haunted? Well, I mean, the house itself, uh, in, the his in the history that we've researched, it was built in 1853. Uh, by the Everett's brothers. Now, funny enough, there's a story, a folklore story, about two brothers that built the location. They were supposedly killing and murdering people and stealing their goods uh, when, when the stagecoaches were coming through. And then they were burying these bodies out in the uh, back of the house and in the hill behind the house after the winter thaw. They were storing them in the basement, the crawl space. You know, I mean, there's, you know, in researching these two gentlemen, you know, I can't pin them as doing that. You know what I mean? But I can tell you that we're working on doing ground penetrating radar or prepping the property for that. Dude, that's like real technology. Yeah. No, they, they bring out real tech for this kind of stuff. 
this is crazy, man. Yeah. So also great story though for a haunted good house. Good story. Good story. You know, Very two, good story. Two guys slaughtering passerbys and burying them on the property. Yeah, like yeah, that would be haunted. I I would agree with that. It would be very haunted. It's very creepy. And like we said before, every ghost story needs a good mystery. Mhm. Yeah, and I looked into this. I don't know if they ever actually did the ground penetrating radar. Uh, if they did, I couldn't find evidence of it. They only really have uh, a website with not many links and then a Facebook page to get information about the Hinsdale house. Okay. Uh, couldn't find anything on either of those. Uh, but after that, Daniel also offers a, a couple other explanations for why it is haunted. One of which, Chris, is the most classic explanation, I think, that is in existence in America, which is that it's on a Native American burial ground. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> What else happened in the history of the house that might explain why it might be haunted? Well, I mean, there's Native American burial grounds on the property. When I was digging a, a new septic system for the house, we found artifacts in the ground, arrowheads. Um, so, I mean, that says to me that there's definitely a, a Native, you know, energy to the property as well. I mean... It was their property to begin with anyway, but, I mean, it very well could have just been there. But it, to me, where the house sits, it sits by a water source, and it's on top of the hill. And it would have been, to me, if I'm thinking about a tribe, where would they want to plot their, you know, plot down? And that would be a perfect location because they can oversee everything. Okay, finding a couple of arrowheads and it being a burial ground are two very different things. No, Chris, because what you don't understand is that he found some arrowheads and it's at the top of the hill. So naturally, it has to be where Native Americans buried people. I mean, it probably makes more sense that maybe there was like a town here or maybe like this was, uh, uh, you know, if they were nomadic, part of their nomadic route. But like, no, or, I'm sorry. Or, yeah, or it's just New York. There's like it, there, there are artifacts from Native American tribes all over this country and if you are in an undeveloped area and you start digging you're going to find something most likely right yeah you know yeah so yeah i i think he's kind of reaching there but he's trying to add a little spook factor i think all right so we have a little bit of history and then he digs into actual interviews that he did with the family who was living there in the 1970s so this was one of the earliest hauntings that obviously has uh people who are alive to talk about it and what they experienced he spoke with the the mother Clara Sandy, the Miller, who lived there in the 70s that had all this phenomena happening to them when they moved in. So they got their life savings, bought the home. What starts happening? Uh, poltergeist like activity in the house, you know, little things, uh, nothing, you know, like that's too crazy. But then the, the daughter, one of their daughters starts getting affected, starts getting scratches, starts getting uh, uh, marks on her body. Uh, th their son Michael is having um, think games fly, fly off the shelf. They're seeing spirits on the outside of the house. Women, a uh, woman in white dancing around the pond. Um, a, a black shadow man in the forest in the front of the house. Um, and they're also hearing chanting. They're also hearing like voices coming from the forest. There's, they saw a creature that they couldn't explain what it was in the back of their house how is he able to be so detailed with what they found so this was an interview that he did with the family who lived there in the 1970s oh, so okay they, so they they were still alive and stuff yeah they moved to california they were still okay. alive and he, he spoke to the mom at the time who shared these this the detail with him okay yeah but this is the earliest he can find of hauntings i believe so i haven't Recorded read his book hauntings. to see if there's earlier ones but this is the okay. earliest that he discusses yeah okay cool but he also has a book on this house yeah let's we'll check that out but kind of spooky man woman in white dancing around a pond don't want to no, see that yeah dancing ghosts as uh, that's a creep factor mm -hmm. or in most yeah in most ways Chanting in the forest as well. That kind of reminds me of the witch. Very, yeah. very much has yeah. witch vibes. Very so much. He had a few more stories from this family in the 1970s, which also creeped me out quite a bit. All right, let's go. They're looking. Imagine this. Imagine just like sitting in your living room and you look out your window and you see a guy in your backyard and you run out to your backyard and try to confront the guy or see what he's doing in your backyard and nobody's there and you look in your window in your living room and he's inside your house stuff like that was happening to them um ashtrays fall, flying off the shelves the, their 
cupboards were flying open. Gas, the gas was being turned on on the stove. So dangerous thing. It was, getting, it was getting kind of dangerous for them. Holy cow, dude. This ghost is trying to kill them. Yeah, it's that's straight up evil stuff. That's yeah, beyond dude. trickster, uh, like poltergeist activity. That's like someone is trying to murder you. Yeah, dude. Murder house. Yeah. And I, w- I, I was going to have nightmares about looking back at my house and seeing a shadowy figure as well. Uh, so. I don't, dude. I'm telling you, know, going back, shadow people in Hat Man, dude, not ever trying to see something like that. Spooky. Just ever spooky so naturally when all this stuff was happening and they they had bought the house they couldn't leave right you know all their money was poured into it really classic horror movie situation right 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 they're stuck there for some reason they're stuck so what do they do man they naturally call an exorcist get yourself a priest get yourself a good priest as father malachi martin says get get a good priest and you know here's the problem though i don't think they got a good one they didn't get dude in Western New York. Got to be few and far between, dude. That's got to be Protestant land. Yeah, no good priests out there. Uh, yeah, dude. If they were a good Catholic priest, they would have stayed in New York City. New York City, Boston. Yeah, Boston. I feel like is good for that. Uh, Western, no, Western New uh, York. Western get out of New here. York, no. Not gonna. You gotta. You gotta ship them in. Yeah. So in 1974, what I read, there was an exorcism approved by the church. I mean, it's hard to get that uh, approved by the church. I would think. Yeah, I mean, she was consulting with this priest. His name was Father Alphonsus Trebolt, and he was, uh, you know, re- researching him. He was really big into the occult, you know, got an approval to do the structural exorcism uh, of the location, and they brought in a film crew to document it because this is new. This is, you know, this is something that didn't happen. This is before the movie The Exorcist even came out. Exercise the location. Everybody knelt down in the living room, and as they were filming this, they said the whole house shook, and it was, like, cleared within 20 seconds. And then, you know, they, they left. They gave the family kind of, like, things that they could do to try to keep it positive, and it came back again. And then it got to the point where he said, you know what, there's not, I don't know what else I can do. You know, I, you should leave. And he left. They had to leave. Didn't get a good priest. That is the worst thing to hear when you bring in a priest to exercise your house. And he's like, I can't, I, there's nothing I can't more I can do. You need to I just can't. leave. Yeah, I can't do it. I and can't it, do it. I, dude, I would be so worried that this thing would follow me. Yeah. I would, that would be the thing that would freak me out the most. That it's like, that it's not the house that this thing is attached to, that it's attached to me or somebody in my family. And that's the thing is that it actually has attached to people and a lot of the paranormal researchers who have visited to, to do research because Daniel now rents the house out like a paranormal Airbnb. Uh, and that's so funny. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. That's so, so uh, we got, we have to do that. Yeah. It's yeah. It's 350 bucks a night. You can stay at the Hensale house with up to six people. That's going to have to be one of our series, dude, where we like go to haunted houses and record. We go on tour. You can also host events there. So maybe we can just have all of our listeners come and stay the night in tents. At the Hensale yeah, there house. you go. There you go. <laughs> but he's, he's reported that uh, people who come have something travel home with them and they've had to actually perform ceremonies and things when they get home to like clear, cleanse out, whatever. Yeah, tag dude. Log. Um, as as George Knapp refers to it, hitchhikers. Uh, same thing that happened at Skinwalker Ranch. Burn a little sage. Exactly. Just, just cover yourself in a little sage. You're good. Yeah, you're fine. So along with the exorcist, they also brought along a psychic, which oh. I would have thought the exorcist would have a problem with that, but apparently not. No, dude. no. this guy loved the occult, apparently. He doesn't care about a psychic. <laughs> He's fine with it. He's and- fine with it. The psychic found something interesting that was actually proven to be correct. No way. He was picking up, yeah, I mean, he he picked up some things that, you know, uh, about a hanging tree that was on the property. He thought maybe that had something to do with it. Um, I did confirm with the town of Hinsdale that this tree that was sitting down the road on the original part of the property is a tree that was used for hanging. And this tree was hit by lightning in 2003 sits over in a ditch there. We've had numerous investigations in this area. And the, this, the dead wood, the dead wood is actually shooting off electromagnetic frequencies. And there's no explanation for it whatsoever. That's weird. Yeah. So regardless of if there were two brothers that were slaughtering people, there were people being executed on this property. Right. The, uh, the hanging tree, dude, that's just such 
creepy old school mm-hmm. like stuff, man. Yeah. And yeah. then just random, you know, EMF spikes around this tree. Yeah. What do you think that is? Is that is that common to things that have been electrocuted by uh, lightning? That actually I don't know. But that would make wood, sense. I mean, wood doesn't conduct electricity, right? Is would it be able to somehow like hold the electricity? I don't was... yeah. I don't see it being able to hold it for years yeah. like a battery. So anyways, that's that's a weird thing, mm-hmm. man. That's a weird thing. Would love to know what that is. Yeah, they they still don't know. They just know that they keep getting spikes around that tree. So dark, some sort the of dark energy of the tree. I mean, yeah. like we said, dude, if you're gonna make a Ouija board, make it from a hanging tree. We should go and do that. There is a guy who makes spirit boxes from wood from haunted houses. Maybe nice. we can get him to make us a Ouija board from a haunted house. Yeah, dude, that would be creepy. Yeah, that that'll get that'll open the portal. Yeah, so we open the portal. Talk directly to Beelzebub. So. After 1974, they couldn't really sell this house to anyone. So they sell it to like a a landlord, basically, who just starts renting it out. And he couldn't keep anyone in the freaking house, apparently. Everyone just keeps moving out immediately. After what happened was is I I had a a show called Paranormal Lockdown filmed there with Nick Groff. And once that hit TV, people started coming out of the woodwork saying, you know, I lived here. I, I, you know, I had similar experiences here. This one family that moved in there in the late 70s. They uh, basically were there for less than a month. She says we were there. We, and we Basically what they had to do is they were having all that same stuff happening. They were having, you know, they were having things thrown at them in the house. The uh, windows were getting ripped open. She said they were scared for their life. And uh, they hightailed it out of there. Within a month, they broke their lease, left all their stuff in the house. Everybody that went in there ended up leaving. All the way to 86, then it's that dormant. And you bought it in 2015? Yes. Holy cow, dude. That's actually kind of crazy. That is weird. That's actually kind of crazy that so many people went through that house Mm -hmm. and didn't come back. And he says that he does confirm that that the folks actually lived there. The issue being, obviously, like, they didn't buy it. There's not really a record. But right. he, he said he has found a way to confirm that information. I don't know how he's just going to that. Maybe but, some pictures or yeah. something like that of them in the house. Yeah, something um, like that. Yeah. Dude, that – this is this is actually kind of becoming weird. Like, what is it? And very fascinating that it sits dormant for 30 years. Yeah, well, and that's the thing is that no one wanted to live there, so the house just sat. And... Like, it just – it got a reputation. Mm-hmm. And then after so long, you know, maybe the town kind of forgets about it. But then the question becomes, why has this house sat vacant for so long? Well, and it was known by the town as being right. haunted in the property. Really? Was known as okay. being haunted. Yeah. So later when we get to our callers, there's a guy who calls in who did live in that town and had some experiences on the property while hunting. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the property used to be gigantic. Uh, it was it was a very large property that was then kind of sliced and diced over the years until the house, which isn't a large house. It's, you know, one to two bedrooms, I think. Uh, right. And it, it was just left there. And that's why it was in such bad shape when he when he bought it. This is all dude. This is becoming inexplicable. And here's the fun part, though. Right. You get a paranormal researcher. He buys a haunted house. So naturally, what does he start doing with it? He starts a live stream. Of the yes. <laughs> he just sets up a bunch of cameras throughout the house and is live streaming at 24 seven. He just starts live streaming on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Dude, what a G. It's what a so smart awesome. idea. She knows it's so many fit, uh, fo- photos of full bodied apparitions in the house, shadow figures, poltergeist activity <clears throat> through the videos. One of my main goals was to be able to broadcast the location out to everybody, you know, like everybody could watch it kind of like watching a you know setting up a dvr system when you go to do a, uh, an investigation um <clears throat> i set up a dvr system there that was a uh, live streaming cameras that were ir and started broadcasting them on par- paranormalwarehouse.com that's so awesome yeah yeah dude but like we said man you know i think we said this back in one of the hotel episodes if you ain't recording 24 7 
you're going to miss something. You're going to miss it. You got to have the cameras everywhere. Everywhere, dude. Everywhere, dude. These ghosts and poltergeists and demons are tricksy fellows. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure ladies, too. Ladies and fellows. Very tricksy. Do demons have gender? I don't know. I imagine some of them do have gender and some of them would be gender less, Paul. I would imagine it's very fluid. That's fair. That's fair. Gender. It's probably up to the deem. I don't know how that works. Very gender fluid. Let me talk oh, to I a priest. I would imagine there's male and female energy. Like there's like the succubus and mm -hmm. there's uh incubus. That's true. Different vibes. Different yeah. vibes depending on the evil that you're doing, I guess. So mm -hmm. with these live streams, Chris. Uh, Daniel actually caught something on his very first live stream, but he fell asleep and missed it. So he was at his house, like his, his house that he lives in on the couch was, was live streaming and everyone saw it, but he didn't. And uh, we were able to stream at night and that night um, I was online and we had probably a couple thousand people watching, you know, the live stream and, you know, I was answering questions about the house and then passed out on my couch and then my phone started blowing up. It just like started like ding, 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 you know, it just woke me up. And I started looking, everybody's sending me screenshots. I'm looking and I'm like, holy cow. First night we had a shadow figure, you know, right on, right on camera, go right from the door in the kitchen into the one bedroom. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Does he not have like, he's, it's not recording. It's just a 100% live stream. It is recording and I have a picture for you. Oh, okay, good, dude. I got to see a picture of All this right. thing. So here is the picture of the live stream where he caught a shadow figure. Oh my gosh, let's go. So as you can see here, Chris, there is a small smudge on the camera. There is a smudge, dude. And if you are looking, it kind of is what we talked about with the shadow people mm -hmm. this would be a head and shoulder shadow it is very much a head and shoulder shadow you are correct i did not put that together but you're right there that's that's a little interesting now and also on a live stream seeing this move across i couldn't find the video i could only find the picture seeing it okay. move across would be interesting but you know uh it, it is something there is something on that screen there is something on that screen, dude. Mm -hmm. Inexplicable. It is. <laughs> inexplicable is a word that could be used. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I got to hear some more, dude. This house, dude. We're going to have to go to this house. We're going to have to go. So he doesn't stay at the house very often, but there was one particular night when some locals wanted to, um, to stay over at the house. And he said that he would stay with them and he had his wife with them. So this is one of the only times he had like a really strong paranormal experience where he felt like he was being touched while at the house. And I felt something brush the back of my head real lightly. Nothing like, like, you know, hit me or scratch me, but it just felt like somebody like caressing my head. And I turned over. And the shadow figure was going in front of the, the only light that we had was a night light in the living room. And you could see the light blocking out. You could see the shadow figure. It was darker than dark. You could see it was, you know, it was blocking out the light. And I, and I kicked Kaylee and I'm like, Kaylee, go turn over. She turned over and she freaked out and she's like, Oh my God, do you see that? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to verify that. And she jumped over on the couch and she's like freaking out. And it kept going back and forth for like five minutes. And then it just dissipated into the wall. Like it didn't do do anything to us. It just was there. And it... Dude, darker than dark. That sounds more like a cat man than a shadow person, dude. Yeah, it sounds a, a little bit like cat man because hat man is, is um, I guess, more corporeal is the word that yeah, I'm looking for. Right. So I don't know. That is pretty spooky. Also, pull your cell phone out and take a picture. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, or what are you doing staying in the room, you turkey? <laughs> leave the house don't don't Get sleep out there. Of there yeah five minutes dude i wouldn't be five seconds in that room can you imagine watching a shadow person for five minutes Cut just it. walking back and forth no Are i you would think me? i was hallucinating i'm rocking back and forth and doing like hail mary's when i saw that ghost that may have been hallucin uh, hallucination the first thing i did was throw the covers over my head dude yeah like i'm not classic. down yeah this will protect me i'll be fine i this, will be fine this i know for a fact that a sheet will protect me from a ghost 
It's true. It really does. So we we got we got a lot of hauntings, right? A lot of things happening. He's also bringing a lot of experts. So that was the big point of this house was he said he wanted to bring in all sorts of different folks. Obviously, they have to pay, uh, but he wants them to research into it to try and you know find their own answers. They pay him to research at the house. Yes, they give him three hundred and fifty dollars a night to research. What at the house. a gig, dude! It's so, genius. I mean, so his the claim being that like. This place is definitely haunted. Mm -hmm. So if you want a place that is definitely haunted, you have to come here. Exactly. There's only so many definitely haunted places that paranormal research can go and research. Yeah, 100% haunted. All of the YouTube paranormal guys have gone. You can go on YouTube and just type in uh, Hinsdale House, and you're going to find so many hits of people that have stayed there. There was one dude that filmed a movie there. He wow. had a whole cast, and the movie was about people at Hinsdale filming a movie about Hinsdale. And oh, then... my God, dude. The levels of, of <laughs> yeah. irony and is is incredible. Yeah, so there's, it's about an hour-long independent film that you can watch also on YouTube. Uh, a Did lot you of watch people... it? I've watched parts of it. Yeah, it's not What's very it? good. It's not very good. Oh, it's pretty bad. Bummer. You know so, what? Just for that, we're gonna put a link to it for uh, sorry for the bad movie, guys. Yeah, if anyone wants to watch that movie, you'll get a full tour of the house from it, basically, which is nice. that would be helpful. That would be helpful. Yeah, and you so, probably get to see some of the property and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Okay, cool. So one of the people that has come, and he actually comes, uh, I believe, on an annual basis, is a shaman who uh, helped kind of figure out what was going on here. He had a, he had a few ideas of his own. Does shaman point to a particular type of religion or, or sect or something like that? Or he's just calling this guy a shaman? Uh, he refers to him as a Native American shaman. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, good. Good, good, good. Um, the only explanation that I got was from a shaman. That a shaman come to the property because I feel like there's Native American elements to bless the property. And he right away said it's a puckwudgie. I go, oh, well, I didn't even know what the heck that was. Do you know oh, what a yeah. puckwudgie is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard that before from uh, uh, Seth, the uh, uh, filmmaker. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He did some, yeah, he did some films on that. Yeah, and uh, so basically, they're creatures that t take care of Native American grounds, burial grounds. So if it's native, possibly has a native element to it. Maybe this creature is something that ac accidentally got picture taken of it or it actually showed itself to us a pakwaji did you look into that paul uh i didn't look a ton into pakwaji it is essentially what he said i did pull the picture that he was referring to where he thought he got a picture of the pakwaji okay let's see this so chris here is the picture of the pakwaji uh can you describe to the audience what you're seeing so to be quite honest if somebody didn't put two blue lines in a red circle to make it look like a body, I would never have thought that this was anything. It, it, I'll be honest, man, this one feels like they're reaching even more than the other ones. Yeah, dude, they found, they saw, they caught like a burst of pollen, and now this is like a Pacwa G. I really like the idea of a Pacwa G. Yeah. I want to know more about Pacwa G. And it does make sense that if this was a Native American spirit that was there as a protection, that it would go after Europeans. It would haunt the crap out of Europeans. That it is would be so like, fair. You need to get the hell off of this property. European person. All right. I now believe this story. You have convinced me. I like the Pacwa G dude a lot. Can you imagine if you were a spirit there to like protect the land of your ancestors and a bunch of like asshole Gen Z paranormal YouTube researchers were coming on your land and like dicking around? Well, and I imagine that a lot of them don't find anything because a Pacwa G, I imagine, is pretty intelligent. It wouldn't want to be known that it was there. Yeah. So like the Pacwa Jeep, like that it's haunting Europeans. I would love to do an experiment of a Native American family moving into the Hinsdale house. <laughs> and they're completely fine. <laughs> I guarantee, dude, I bet they have a beautiful existence there. They're like, somehow the rest of the town, it's raining. 
but we have a perfectly <laughs> sunny day. It's you know what I mean. Yeah, like, flowers start blooming all around. The all town. over just, like, the place. Nature you know starts what I mean? working well again. Yeah, they start like three sisters' gardens just start like growing all over the place. It's nothing but corns, beans, and squash all over the place, and it's just a beautiful world, dude. Just get get the colonizers out. Animals dude, so. are just like coming up to the house <laughs> and like start cleaning the baseboards and stuff. Well, at, at the mention, though, of the Pukwudgie, uh, obviously, George Knapp is like, this sounds a little like Skinwalker Ranch. Ooh, got to bring it up, and dude. Native American connection, uh, similarities to Skinwalker. Uh, you know, that and the, the fact that uh, hitchhikers sort of follow people home after they've been there, that's another similarity, too. Uh, who knows if it's the same kind of phenomena, but... Uh, that occurred to me. So maybe more than one thing that's represented there all crowded into the same general area. That was something we didn't mention, but the idea of it hitchhiking on you mm -hmm. is terrifying. Very scary. Very but it scary. also, you know, it kind of lends itself to that idea of that these entities are feeding off of us mm -hmm. and so maybe it's not so much that they're hitchhiking on us but that they've taken so much of our energy or whatever it is that they're eating that it we feel like when we even when we get away with it we still kind of feel that seeping mm -hmm. right it's like leeches or something like that yeah very very astute chris because i didn't include this clip but he does talk about how uh, one of the reasons why he thinks that he is not messed with that much in the house is because he's giving it so much energy and it, it wants his energy like it is feeding off him in some way oh and yeah. not only that but he's also like providing energy yeah i mean like sacrificial energy almost he's he's bringing in people every night um yeah. so if yeah. this thing is like a dark entity he's like Thank you, you know, thank you. My boy, Daniel. Yeah. You're the man. Oh, I can't eat any more energy. So if you haven't listened to our Skinwalker Ranch episode, actually, that's episode 11, so go back and check that out. Uh, it is in our podcast archive. And that's uh, a George Knapp as well. It's also, uh, that one was actually a George Knapp being interviewed, because that was before he that's was a right. uh, guest host on Coast. That's right. Mm -hmm getting a little coast history up in here. Nice. Um, so Chris, like I mentioned, Daniel's base, he's Airbnb this place out, right? He is <laughs> renting it out for anyone. Did who you wants look to. it up on Airbnb? It's not actually on Airbnb. Okay. You have to go on his website and then like okay. send a message on the that Facebook makes, page. Yeah. That makes so much more sense. Yeah. Because I don't yeah, think yeah, Airbnb yeah, yeah. would allow it. No, I don't know. Maybe I've never looked at haunted houses on Airbnb. It, it probably does. exists. It may, it may. And I, and I tell the teams that sign up there because I have I talk to every single person that goes in that house. I don't just let anybody like book it and go have a free for all. I want to make sure that they know what they're that they're doing, their experience, and that they uh, know how to like uh, ground themselves if something you know heavy starts happening. Wow! So, so he's he's doing the work. He's doing the work. He's not just letting people stumble in. I'm not just gonna let some guy off the street stay at this house. You got to know what you're doing if you come to the Hinsdale house. It, he kind of reminded me of that Ouija board guy, you know, from our the ghost Ouija ghost. board guy. Yeah. And also the guy that was going to perform the exorcism because he used to do magic before he was a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> do you think it's smart for me to exercise my buddy? Yeah. No, no, don't do that. I want to learn just, I, I feel like I just need to know some of the secrets to protecting myself from dark energy, because quite honestly, I don't think if it does happen to me, I wouldn't know what to do. I couldn't stay at the Hensdale house. You know, Chris, it's funny that you say that. I was just listening to an old art episode where he interviews a, a real witch, um, Dr. Evelyn, and she talks about that. that. That could be something that we cover if you want to know how to protect yourself. Let's from, learn. Yeah. Let's learn how to protect ourselves from evil spirits in case we should ever come across one one day. Yeah, not only that, but people trying to literally kill you with magic is another thing that she talks through. There's a, I had, so defense against the dark arts. Essentially, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so Amazing. Chris, we got to get to our callers. Yes. 
So John from Syracuse calls in. He's got a pretty basic question. You, it's, you he's it, kind of regionally in the area. He is. Yeah, he's he's in the area, man. And he's uh, he's got a question. It's uh, you make any money off this, buddy? Hey, George, I just had a question for your guest. Is this is this something that he does for for business or for pleasure? Or because it seems like he's he's devoted a lot of time and energy and resources into this. No, I mean it's it's something that I have a genuine interest in, and that it's kind of like somebody having a passion for race cars or football. I mean, this is something that I have a passion for is trying to understand like what happens to me. It's not about, it's not, I do charge because I take the money and I, and I reinvest it back into the location, but I also want to employ people that know are good at what they do to come there. I mean, it's not a situation where they, if, if they can't afford to come there, I'm going to tell them, no, I've never turned anybody away that is good at what they do in the field. I'm, I'm booked October of 2022. All the weekends are booked already. I mean, people are coming from all over the place and booking this house to come and investigate there. We couldn't even stay right there if we tried. And just to refresh people on this, this was from October 2021. He was booked for the next year. For the next year, this man was booked. Incredible. Yeah, he's having Incredible. a great time. He's raking it in 350 a night, dude, for this oh my janky God, ass. Dude house balling out and you don't even need to buy nice furniture for it you don't need to like put little you know if anything you want the crappy bed. furniture in it yeah the shitty with the bad for this place if, if anything it's old crap it's just broken stuff in old antiques and honestly man this this makes me want to buy a haunted house because this guy has the best business model you don't have to do anything you gotta make no improvements and you're just raking it in Let's buy a house and say it's haunted. What is going on, dude? This is incredible. <laughs> yeah, this guy's dope. And his whole story, too, is that he he claims that having these people come through and do research is actually healing for the house because it has spirits who want okay. their voices and their stories told. Um, and the, the shaman has reiterated this. I don't know if he's paying the shaman or not, but I feel like he is to have the shaman just agree with him so much. Uh, but it's like, oh, it's great for the house. It's great for my family. We're restoring the house. It's a restoration project, all this stuff. So he's got a whole little bit going on. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. And you're also making fat bills. Yeah. And here's the thing, man, is I don't even know if you can call this guy a grifter. Because I feel like he's giving people a very fun experience to stay the that, night that, in a haunted house. Dude, this is a business model, man. <laughs> and like, yeah, that's why I'm not even mad at him. Yeah. I'm not even mad at him, dude, because all these people <laughs> are also probably making money. And some of them probably way more money than the 350 a night that they're spending. And it's 350 for the whole house for six people. That's $58 a person. That is worth it. That's worth it, dude. That's but, so worth but, it. <laughs> Dude, you can't even get $58 a night by yourself out and about today, dude. Yeah. You got it. You're going to a Motel 6 for $58. Now, that might be haunted too, though, dude. That's there's, true. Some people died in that Motel 6. Yeah. Or there's a serial killer right next to you in the, uh, the, yeah. the room. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. So we got another caller, Daniel, also from New York. This guy has a Hinsdale story, dude. He's he's from the town. Hinsdale local. Hinsdale local. A Hinsdalian, as they call them. Oh, my God. I kid you not when I say this to you. This is in 1968. And uh, I was, my brother-in-law and I were deer hunting on two hills uh, on the other side of the Hinsdale house. And we're in the clearing of a field on top of the hill. And we could hear a faint noise of a group of men grumbling like this. And the voices got louder and louder and louder. And they were coming towards us as this cloud of voices just went over the top of us and kept on going over the top of us and then faded out dude that was that indian spirit dude for sure could have been no doubt i should have said native american spooky 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 never I can't believe hear I just that. said indian dude do what i can't believe i just said indian uh, a little disappointed i wasn't gonna say anything but 
What's going on? I don't. You're. I, I think you're too worked up. You're all over the place. What is from, going on? From this new business model you just learned about of renting oh out paranormal houses, no, dude. I, no, I was thinking about how creepy that would be if a Native American spirit went over my head in yeah. the middle of the night in the forest. Would hate that. So this guy was like kind of freaked out, and, and he was, you know, you could hear it in his voice, right? And yeah, uh, there's a reason for it. So he goes in a bit more into the spookiness of. Uh, all of this and the radio show today as well. I woke up out of a dead sleep tonight and I turned the radio on and this is what was on your program. I, I'm, I woke up out of a dead sleep and I put the earplug in, turned on the radio and you were talking about the Hinsdale house. I just couldn't believe it. I had to call you and tell you this. Well, I can tell from the, the tone in your voice that it's something that's been on your mind for a long time. I've, I haven't told many people this because I would always think that they were, they would think that I was crazy. But I kid you not. Crazy, crazy right with you, David. I mean, that's, uh, it's, this is the type of stuff that we, people experience there. And I- All very weird. All very strange. All and- very strange. And the caller does sound pretty genuine. He sounds genuine. And you know what this reminded me of, Chris, is the Antichrist hotline episode we did. And that guy who called in and pretended yes. like he had just woken up. This is how you do that bit. This That's is so much better. He, 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 if he, if this was a bit, he nailed it. Nailed the bit. I bought it. I'm hook, line, and sinker. I'm, I, I'm like, yeah, this guy saw something. This guy was sleeping. This guy woke up from a dead <laughs> sleep and randomly put on AM radio. And they're talking about Hinsdale House. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's all I ask is I want you to make me buy it when you're calling into coast to coast. You know what I mean? What is going on with this house? That's the house, man. Hensdale house, dude. Never heard of it. Hensdale house. That is the story of Hensdale, Chris. That's what we had today. Um, Good addition. Good addition to Spooktober, dude. Well done. That's a little cherry on top of Spooktober. uh, So we will be going back to normal programming. (laughs) Although I say normal programming. uh, uh, How much is it? (laughs) How much is it actually going to change? Well, Not that much. There'll we, be some we, more aliens. We, did, we narrowed. We, we narrowed. narrowed. We narrowed. Yeah. We narrowed. So we Chris, stuck with paranormal mostly. So. Yeah, most. Yeah, we, we stuck with the spooky for for October. But yeah. uh, Chris, uh, on a scale of one to five haunted Airbnbs, what do you give the haunted Hinsdale House story? I'm going to give it like a three, maybe a three and a half, because I, and it's mostly it's nothing to do with Daniel, and it's nothing to do with the Hinsdale House. I just want to learn. I want to know more, dude. This brought up more questions for me than I got answers to. <laughs> One, I want to know about paranormal research science. Want to know more about that. Two, definitely want to know more about how am I supposed to protect myself against dark demons and things that are trying to eat my soul and eat my emotions and feelings. I don't know how to stop that. I, I would like to know how to stop that. Three, we're going to have to start a whole series where we go to haunted houses and record. And so now my mind's thinking about that, too. Man, you know, here's the thing is I feel like I'm listening to too much of this damn show whenever you say things like that. And I know exactly the episodes that we need to do to address those <laughs> you I'm, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's an Art Bell episode, Dr. Uh, Dr. Evelyn Paglini. She talks about most of that. And there's another one all about spooky technology. Um, well, I, we're doing, but that means we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and that you're becoming an expert and you're teaching me, dude. The, the questions and in, in places my mind has gone over the course of these last months, dude, I don't know where I am anymore. I'm and that's, lost. That's, that's what this show does to you. I'm complete, I am untethered. You lose touch with reality. It's great. It's great that it's on air. It's healthy for everyone. Yeah. Um, well, Chris, I'm going to, dude, I am going to give this, honestly, I'm going to give it five haunted airbnbs i'm gonna tell nice. you why the ingenuity of this man incredible the business dude. acumen yeah. to buy a haunted house just make it where it's just shitty enough to where it's not gonna fall down and you can stay in it 
and then rent it out for 350 bucks a night to all of these paranormal radio shows, all these paranormal uh, like YouTubers and TV shows. It's crazy. He's booked out for a year, Paul. A year. He is booked out for a year. And here, I love that. I love that acumen. I'm not a business guy, but you know, you got to respect it when when you have that good of an idea. Ain't that America? That is, that is. Ain't that America, baby. Come on. So hope, hope the Hinsdale house is doing okay. Uh, in terms of housekeeping, Chris, we forgot to do it at the beginning of the show. So we're going to do it now. They have an email address, uh, C to C P M pod at gmail.com. That is with the number two between the two C's. Uh, if you like the show, give us five stars on Apple podcasts or Spotify and smash that subscribe button. We release episodes every Thursday, and you'll make sure that you never miss them. Well, thank you for listening, and we'll see you more uh, next week. All spooky, all the time. Later.